It's smoked chicken. There ain't nothing around it. What is good, Gray Gang? We're here to do it. We're basically doing a little farm update on the chickens and the guinea. Yeah, chick, chick. Here, come eat some corn. Come eat some corn. Corn for everybody. Free corn, free corn. But it's not free because at least we get footage of them. As of right now, this is my flock of chickens and guinea. And then there's two down there. They're, they're being shy or something. I don't know what their deal is, but... Yeah, the guineas mean the guinea used to have two friends and they disappeared. Same with a lot of the chickens. But here's what the video is about. Right now with the chickens, we have two problems. The number one problem is, um, uh, well, yeah, here they are. They're exposed. They're out in the open. Literally right over here to the left is uh, straight up Kentucky mountains. We got bobcats, fox, coyotes, stray dogs, pretty much it. But all of those will gladly take a chicken. Oh, don't forget hawks, vultures. The hawk flies around here daily. Yeah, he's always around here. What else eats them from above? People. Mammy. But yeah, they're pretty exposed out here. Now they're chickens. That's kind of to be expected, but I want to try to fix that. And I do have an idea. The second problem we have with these chickens is that they're getting Getting a little too comfortable. If you look over here at the old tractor, they have um, they've fully used it as their sleeping quarters, and that is just unacceptable. But that's not really what made me mad. What made me mad was that they are using my boat to sleep in. I had this thing up for zero days, and they were already up in here making it their home. And that's just not okay, because I've not even used the boat yet. Or at least while this is being filmed, I've not used it yet. But with those two problems, I feel like they can both be fixed with the same solution. If you watch the channel quite a bit, you'll know that I have a few goats and Steven, the guard dog, he's an angel. Not really, but he thinks he is. But I was thinking, if I could just get the chickens to stay up here, that literally solved both the problems because Steve could pretty much protect them from anything. But if we could get the chickens to stay up here, they wouldn't be pooping on my boat and Steve could protect them. So that's what we're going to do. We're getting ready right now. We're getting the chickens a new house. Also in this video, we're going chicken trading, chicken hatching, and we're also going to eat one. So it's going to be a pretty packed video. But first, we're going to get their new house. Well, that turned out pretty good. Took a lot longer than expected, but it did turn out pretty good. Now we have an absolute chicken resort. I think I already told you this, but Mamie, my grandma, we have, I think we got over 20 eggs in the hatcher. They'll be hatching by the end of this video, but. But you open it up, you walk in, you got one nest box, one roost pole. This would be really good for just a couple chickens, and that's actually what we're going to do next. And it's two stalls, so if I want to keep some separated, I can absolutely do that. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Looking good, looking good. Daryl better, be, better appreciate this. Daryl better. And the best part about it, it's right here, close and personal with Steve, so that if anything tries to get frisky, he can stop. Him. Oh, and of course, we don't have to keep the door shut, but as long as they'll keep coming back here every night to sleep, that's all I'm really wanting. As long as they can sleep close to Steve and sleep away from my boat, I'm happy. Now to do that, we are gonna have to keep them in here for probably maybe a week or two so that they'll get used to sleeping here. But for that, we're gonna have to do that tomorrow because the sun has already went down. We got about 45 minutes left of daylight. And uh, at the moment, Daryl does not want to be caught. We'll catch y'all tomorrow. All right guys, so uh, it's not the next day, but we decided it's gonna be a whole lot easier to catch them here tonight since you can already look over there. They're already getting ready to roost on the tractor and my shelf, which they are not supposed to be there. But we're thinking instead of just start coming back tomorrow and catching them during the day, we'll just wait like 20 minutes and get them off the roost when they're basically blind. Now we're not gonna be able to get the guinea because I don't actually know where she is. I think she's in the very top of the pine tree. Gu guineas can fly really good. But yeah, I don't know. I didn't mention this earlier, but one of the biggest problems, well, we actually have a third problem and it's that let me just tell you this. Whenever we got most of these chickens, they were all really chicks, so we didn't have a clue what they were. Once they grown up, I don't know what it is, but 80% of them turned into be roosters. And now they basically all just fight the whole time because they're all roosters. See, look at them too. Right there's three roosters. Even right Daryl. Even Daryl. Every single chicken we have is basically a rooster. Like, I have three hens. And Tila. 
and Sheba. But while we're waiting on it to get, you know, sundown, we're gonna feed Steven. We're gonna feed the goats a little bit. The chickens have kinda already ate. Look at Skinny. He don't know where he's going. We lowered the boat down today, so they don't really know what to do. Lee, look, that's, that's a problem. We can't have 16 roosters. Here, goat, 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 goat. Here, goat, goat. Here you go, brother Steve. Brother Steve one time. Here you go, goats. Eat you some, eat you a little bit of grass or something. Oh yeah, big one. Show us what you made of, Kobe. Show us what you made up. Now I just said that 80% of the chickens are roosters. Obviously I'm not gonna keep them all. We're actually gonna trade off a bunch and eat one of them. The one I am gonna keep is him. That's Daryl. He's pretty cool. He, he, he's the one that jumps on my head all the time. But we're gonna keep him because he's just a savage. I don't know if we'll get the guinea tonight. Oh yeah, we'll get him. Uh, It's about to flop to the top of the roof. Look at him. He's already trying to get in the boat. He's already trying to get in the boat. There's the culprit. Usually the boat's like 12 feet high and they still get in. And I have to come lower it down every night and come out, but... They're finding their final resting place, which is perfect. We'll get back with you guys in whenever it's dark. Bye. All right, guys, we're getting close. It's pretty much dark. I got the KG headlamp on. We're gonna go ahead and take them out. There's two of them that I'm kind of scared of. I'm scared of the guinea. I'm scared of bullet. Bullet's that one that's just like, that just disappears for months at a time, but she never dies. She's scared. Dude, she'll kill you. She's also the mother to like half these chickens. They're just chilling. We're about to go in and swoop them up. Can't see them, but yeah, they're over there. Calm down, Steve. Right, I'm pretty scared. I'm not even gonna go for bullets. She's terrifying. Mark Henry's getting a little antsy over here. I'm about to get this red one. Oh, I thought that was Daryl. I'm gonna go for him first. Daryl's right here. I'm gonna go for this and right here. I'm gonna go for Mark Henry. No, that's Daryl. Did two of them go in there? No, but one missed. Daryl, it's me. I ain't no coyote. You're with me. Let's take Daryl and Mark Henry up there. You want to try to get that one? Yeah. Okay, good luck. That's Bullet. That is? That's Bullet. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, keep her and let's go. We are now transporting Bullet, Mark Henry, and Daryl. I am surprised she is not killing you. She don't like me. It's all right, Daryl. We're going to a new place. Hey, done, Steven. All right, Daryl, this is your new home right there. I will put you up on your roost for you. Now, there's your roost. Grab it. There we go. Now, I'll get Mark Henry and put him in there. Oh, hi, Mark. Come on. There you go. He is one of the roosters that we may be eating or will be trading. We have not figured it out yet. On to the next one. Last one, it's half fine chicken, so I don't think it'll be as nice. Oh, he's going for it. Come on. He's an athlete. Catch him, catch him. He just, catch him, get him, get him. We lost him now. I just Let's go. You go that way. Oh, there he is. Get it. He'll fly, so get, gotta be quick. <laughs> there he is, get him, get him. He ain't gonna attack, he's a chicken. Let's go. I'm number one. <laughs> Let's open that door, toss her in. Steve, no. Well, Alright, we're done. What do you think about that? A lot easier than it would have been in the morning. Still hard though. Alrighty. I had to put one in a choke hold 3000 Chuck Liddell. And that right there, we caught the chickens. Next step, trade. Alrighty guys, it's the next day. It's time for the chicken trade. We're obviously going to be trading off the roosters because we don't want to trade off any of the hens, but we are going to keep one rooster and that is going to be 
the one, the only. What's his name again? Daryl. Daryl! Sorry, Daryl. Your name kind of slipped my mind for a second. But yeah, as of now, that's the only hens we got. And one of them's a guinea. So I don't I, I don't even know if he's a boy or a girl. I have no way to tell. The good thing is that one of our hens actually laid an egg yesterday. I don't know where it is. It kind of disappeared. Anyways, we got five roosters here. We're going to leave one for us to eat. We're going to take the other four to trade off. The biggest thing right now is I can't decide if we're going to eat one of the Dahmers or one of the red ones. Because the Dahmers have more meat, but they also have more trade value. I think I'm going to... Man, I can't tell. I think we'll eat one of the red ones. And get as much trade value as we can off the of Dahmers. We got that one. That's Jemima. He got loose, but uh, that's all right. We can take him out. There we go. They are in the back of the Defender. We'll go ahead and strap them in. We'll head on down to the trading place, which is also just my friend's house. Seeds over there like I've done all this protecting for nothing. Hey, I came out here last night, and Steve was literally laying right at the foot of the chicken coop. So he was keeping an eye on them for us. Steve's a good guard dog sometimes. know if he's gonna be here hopefully we either get some hens or really young hens and I really don't care about either one whichever one works as long as they ain't roosters I'm fine all right so we just got off the main road usually you'd be thinking like you know dude isn't that illegal to drive like a four-wheeler on the main road and a lot of times it can be, but for this specific situation in Kentucky, and since we're doing farm-related stuff on a farm vehicle, totally legal. And that's one of the best things, one of the best things back in Kentucky. Like we're out here chicken trading, two lane roads, 100% legal. We can drive it all day long. Bro. Beep, chicky, 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 chicky. Usually calm, don't they? Yeah. Here we got some running. There's one. <laughs> Susie, new fat, new new member of the Gray Gang. We doing, buddy? You named them yet? Or are you going to? Because they are going to be your food. No, you haven't got them named. You do have them named? We got them named Bacon. Uh huh. Pork Chop. <laughs> and a very tender woman. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good name for them. I got, we just left Bart, my chicken plug. Uh, we got three hens off of four roosters. That's a pretty fair trade. He was saying that he gets ten dollars out of the roosters, about twelve, thirteen out of the hens. So we went ahead, traded four roosters, three hens, and I'm very happy with that. We're gonna head back home, put those back this time, put the smack down on that one chicken, then we're gonna eat it. Back at the homestead. Oh, let me tell you the plan with these guys, because I got a decently specific plan. I think I may have told you this earlier in the video. I may have actually told you that I'm putting the chickens and stuff in there for a few days so that they figure out where to come back to and then I'll let them loose. Which is the awesome thing about this thing. My uncle actually gave me this chicken coop or whatever. It has two stalls, which is awesome. That means I can put some chickens in here full time and then I can put some chickens in here like the door open so that once they free roam they can come back and sleep here at night. So what I'm thinking I actually have a game hen in there but that hen is actually laying eggs these hens are laying eggs I'm actually going to put them in a stall full time with the door shut so that they're super secure nothing can touch them and I know where they're going to lay their eggs. As for some of the other ones like the guinea and maybe that random red hen I'm just going to let them roam loose because they're not laying eggs right now so I don't have a reason to keep them cooped up. So yeah that's what I'm going to do these three put them in a stall 
semi-permanently. We'll open it up, put them in here. These chickens, they've been around his roosters for a long time, so I don't need to put Daryl in there with them. I can just let them in here. They will stay fertile for around a month. I'm gonna put these and that black hen in here, lock them up full time, and that'll be about it. <laughs> Just like that. Now those chickens are actually gonna stay in there. I'm not letting them out in this video, but now the rest of the video is dedicated to that man right here. What was his name? But yeah, we're gonna take out that chicken. Okay guys, we're about to cook this chicken, but first thing we gotta do is kill the chicken. We gotta pluck the chicken. Then it's pretty self-explanatory then we just cook the chicken, but we're gonna be doing all of it, except killing it, on a barrel can fire. Now this is about as southeastern Kentucky as it gets, son. We're gonna prime our fire right here, right here. Real nice, real nice. Now we'll go ahead and get a little bit started right here. A little bit of a fire going. That'll be our basis. That'll be a little kindling in the bottom. One important thing about a can fire is that it has holes in it. Now you know, you take your 12 gauge, you take your 22s, you put holes in it that way you can get plenty circulation down there at the bottom. A lot of oxygen can come in. It's all with a little fire making piece. We'll get some little stuff started, then we'll toss some wood on it, then we'll toss some bigger wood on it. Then we'll actually heat up the water we're gonna be using to strip the chicken of its feathers, and then we'll actually let the fire die down, and that's whenever we'll really use it to start cooking. How are you gonna cook chicken? You gonna fry it or what? We're gonna grill it, kinda. Roast it, I don't really know. Sounds pretty good. It's gonna be really good. There we go. We're making sure that we're burning clean wood because we're gonna eat over. I'll go get us some water. We're gonna need this to get the feathers off. So we went ahead and stuck in some wood and uh, once that actually starts burning, we should be on a good little highway to, to chicken legs. We'll let that burn down some. Right now still burning furiously off of the paper, I think. But we got a little breeze coming in from this way, pushing right into those holes, giving it a ton of oxygen. I think a can fire is literally one of the most effective ways to have a good strong fire once it kind of dies down a little bit we'll put that grate over it start heating up the water because how we're going to do the chicken is first you, you destroy the chicken okay then you dunk it in hot water that lets the feathers come off really easy then you pluck it then you basically got a chicken you can do whatever you want to with it we're going to go for the legs to cook today then we'll save the thighs and the rest of that for later that's a strong fire dude and that's burning off of straight wood right now like i don't i don't think that's burning off of the no. Yeah, that's not paper anymore. That's just straight fire. I'm gonna let it cool down some. Though. Got a little grill right here. That way we can actually set something on top of the fire. Just like that. Now I'll grab the water. This is what we're actually gonna be uh, processing the chicken with. We're not even cooking it with this fire. I mean with the water. But we're gonna leave it right there. Let it be heating up. The fire is doing extremely well. That's way too hot to cook anything. But we're not cooking. We're just getting the water hot. That'll be perfect for what that's doing. When we're gonna start cooking it, we're gonna make sure that the fire is like basically gone we really don't want that many flames if any we just want the coals to be hot because the fire extremely hot and that'll burn that'll just destroy anything we try to cook on learn that from deer meat for dinner boys he taught me how to cook all over fire you don't go right over flame that's how you burn stuff that's how you get cut off in there and put on and like burn that's what he taught me and it really stuck with me all right guys here is the chicken we just took him out there's a hundred different ways to take him take out a chicken i don't think you need my help on that one steve's going crazy i don't know if he thinks i'm a predator or what but anyways good little chicken he's not a giant one because we didn't stick him with steroids but this is a hundred percent non-gmo homegrown farm raised barnyard chicken so last year i actually had one of those chickens lay this egg hatch him do everything herself i didn't have anything to do with this chicken at all i just let this completely happen naturally obviously like i fed him corn throughout his life and stuff but besides that this guy's been free roam his entire life and that's really cool but anyways we got the stuff heating up you can see the fire's not blazing anymore the water is i'm gonna imagine it's pretty hot so what you need the water hot for is if you don't have water hot the feathers can still kind of come off like that right there but they come off a whole lot easier if you dunk them in water so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick just for a minute see now that we pulled him off like these feathers they should come off a little bit easier okay it's not it's actually not and i've done a few chickens i've not done a ton of chickens but i don't know you kind of just pluck them like that we'll do that to the whole chicken we'll get off the parts oh and then right there's the breast i accidentally skinned it too hard but that right there's the breast meat so that's really awesome we're gonna go ahead and do this me and ethan we're gonna eat the legs today which are those babies right there looking really nice we're gonna grill them we'll catch y'all after well it gets time to actually start cooking it
there we go guys i uh y'all saw the struggle at 10 4 it's it's hot and it's not even well now it's picking up flames again the fire's picking up flames again which that's okay anyways we got two legs two thighs the wind's blowing crazy i'm probably gonna smother by the end of this video the reason that i put tin foil down is uh you know so we don't get tetanus because i have no idea where that grill grate came from we bought this one from amazon but i thought it was gonna be half the size and it came out half stinking size of a car hood but yeah i mean now we just gotta wait it's a slow little process we're basically grilling the chicken and this right here is the knife we did every single bit of it with we could have even killed the chicken with this knife but we chose a different option but this is the kg pocket knife literally pull it out of my pocket from everyday use cut open a chicken with it steve's being a good dog quiet because we're making a video thanks but yeah kg pocket knife pick them up kennel grade one com slash shop first link in the description you can also pick up this usa t-shirt but this knife like I mean, y'all that have the knife, y'all tell me all the time, this thing's a stinking beast and everybody knows it. I mean, it's it's my everyday carry knife. I've skinned chickens with it. I've skinned coyotes, deer. I've cut trees with it. I've killed iguanas with it. This thing keeps on kicking. Now, as for the chicken. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. The foil's kind of being weird, but. One thing I can promise, that fire is hot. And uh, we just got to take our time and be pretty patient with this. Because we don't want to get impatient cooking chicken. Cow, you can eat it rare. Chicken has to be fully cooked. Has to be. No exception. What's the disease that they carry? Um, Salmonella, ain't it? Yep. But now that right there, if you went and bought that exact thing from KFC, you're looking at about six bucks. We got it for free. Kind of. Actually, that's not true at all. Pay hey. for the food. You, you huh? gave them a house. Water. I gave them house. I ran off a fox for them. I gave them a house, water, corn, but that's honestly about it. See, I didn't, I didn't babysit those chickens. They were free range. That's the best part. So like, oh, and the yellow stuff, it's kind of hard to see. It's mainly on the other side, but the little yellow stringy stuff, that's the same exact color as corn. That actually is corn. That's their fat. But he's not a super fat chicken. You get one of the GMO ones that they stick them with steroids. They're just full of fat. But that's 100% free range natural chicken. It's not super fat. Now while that's cooking, me and Ethan, we're gonna go ahead and take care of the rest of the stuff and we're gonna eat it later. Catch y'all when it's almost done. Alright guys, so the chicken was actually cooking very slowly. So, as you can see, we added a little bit more wood and we actually completely, instead of like kind of grilling it in a way, we wrapped the chicken completely up in that foil. It has little slits in it so that heat can get in and out, I guess. But yeah, that's just going to cook like that. It's going to be crispy, I can assure you. But yeah, we're just going to slow cook it. We're going to go on and do some other things in the day. Let that thing cook for an hour or two, come back, and then we'll see what it looks like then. All right, the meat's done. It's actually been going for a really long time. Um, we never really understood whether it was done or not because it was pink. And I didn't know chicken was supposed to be pink. And it's usually not. But a lot of times whenever you roast chicken, especially if it's like a, a young, real chicken, it said that they can be pink sometimes. So we're going to go ahead and unwrap it real quick. The fire's been going all day. Are you seeing this? KG, I think it's cooked. I think it is too. That's fall off the bone chicken. Literally. The bones are crushing. Yeah, we may have cooked these. Dude. Cooked? Look at the difference. That's, do you know what that is? Where? That's a leg and thigh. That's like the entire thing you'd get at KFC. From here down is a leg, here up is the thigh. Like it's so much smaller. We knew it was going to be smaller than KFC because it's a it's a real chicken. But I didn't think it'd be that small. Well, without further ado, boys, here we go. We're about to figure it out. What are your predictions? Looks a little raspy. First looks at it, it's definitely smoked. It's definitely red. Definitely got seasoning on it. But that does not mean it's not good. We know that the internal temperature was at least 165 degrees because the bone shattered when I touched it. I know that the outside's pretty tough. Or not tough, but cooked. It's definitely going to be crispy. I say just go ahead and rip into it. Have me a knife. We ain't got no knives. Tear it off. See, that kind of looks like chicken jerky. We made chicken jerky. As bad as I have to say it, it's not bad. Is it good though? It's pretty good. Really? Yeah. We essentially made chicken jerky here. Right on the outside, got some char on it. Pretty good. That piece was a little tough, but the meat part is good. I didn't say nothing about it. It wasn't tough. It's tough. <laughs> I can taste the pine. Can you taste the pine? 
A little bit. That's pretty good, dude. But yeah. Oh, come on. Look at that. Look what some goodness we got. Look at that, man. Look at that. This yellow up here is the fat. I'm not even going to taste it. But, oh, mm. we just smoked a chicken, dude. You know what this reminds me of? Chicken, hopefully. You know the chicken you get on stick at Chinese? Yeah, it's smoked chicken. There ain't nothing around. It's smoked barnyard chicken. I think Daryl's next. No, we ain't cooking Daryl. May have charred it a little bit too much. But besides that, I'm finishing that. It's really good. If you got some roosters that obviously you don't have any use for, just kill them. Eat them. If we can get 10,000 likes on this video, me and Ethan will go to the flea market, buy us a free range turkey, two of them, let them loose, let them hatch some turkeys. Then we'll eat one of them. But yeah, do that. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you liked it, and comment down below. Tell me what other animals would you like to see like this? Because this was really fun, and it turned out really good. Bye!